Hi, in this video, I'll show you how to fill out your timesheet as an IHSS home care provider. You should already have received your timesheet in the mail. Once you've got the timesheet in front of you, along with a pen, we're ready to start. Please make sure you use a ballpoint pen with black ink. Timesheets are processed by a machine that only reads ink from a regular black ballpoint pen. No pencils or felt tip markers, please. Okay, let's look at your timesheet. You'll see it's broken up into four blocks, each one representing an individual work week from Sunday through Saturday. On the left side of each column, you'll see the date. IHSS providers fill out timesheets twice a month. The first pay period goes from the 1st to the 15th, and the second pay period covers the rest of the month. The boxes you need to fill in for each pay period will already be marked with their corresponding date. All the rest of the boxes will be filled in with zeros. Please make sure not to write anything in those boxes. Before you begin working, it's a good idea to create a schedule with your consumer that organizes each month's authorized hours so they're spread equally between the two pay periods. If you don't know how many hours you've been authorized to work, please call your local IHSS office to find out. If you don't have the information for your local office, just call the toll-free number on your screen. So, once you've learned your total hours, divide them by four to figure out your maximum weekly authorized hours. For example, if you've been given 100 monthly hours, you can work a maximum of 25 per week or 50 for each pay period. You've most likely been assigned some extra minutes on top of your hours. Adding up those minutes can be tricky. So rather than spreading them out over your work week and having to add them up at the end, try to make things simpler by working all of your additional minutes for the month on just one day. Now that you've gotten organized, you can start filling in your timesheet. Mark the hours and minutes you've worked next to their corresponding dates. The first two squares in each column are for hours, and the last two are for minutes. For example, if you worked 8 hours on the first of the month, you'd mark it like this. If you worked 10 hours and 15 minutes on the 9th, you'd mark it like this. Adding zeros in the blank squares is optional, but we recommend it, as it helps you make sure you've put all the numbers in the right place. If you didn't work at all on a particular day, just leave it blank. When entering your hours, keep your numbers clear, readable, and simply written. Don't curlicue your twos or write your sevens or zeros with lines across them. And make sure all your writing stays inside the boxes. In fact, it's a very good idea to try to keep your numbers small enough so they fit into just the top half of each box. Because if you make a mistake, it's not okay to use whiteout or any type of eraser on your form. If you need to fix an error, just cross out the incorrect number with one line and write the correct one in below. If your original entry was small enough, you'll have no problem keeping it all inside the box. If for any reason you've gone outside the box, it's best to request a new timesheet, as this one could be rejected, delaying your paycheck. To request a new timesheet, just call the county office that handles your consumer's case. Now, you've entered all the time for the days you've worked. You'll see that at the bottom of each block, there's a line for that week's total hours and minutes. We recommend you leave it blank. Since your form is processed by a computer, your time will be totaled automatically. And if you've accidentally written down the wrong total or made any other kind of mistake, your timesheet could be rejected. Of course, it is important that the hours you've marked add up to the correct total. Keep a dedicated notebook where you add up your totals and record a backup of your schedule with all your hours and minutes worked. Even better, download the SEIU Local 2015 app for Android or iOS and track hours on your phone. Either way, you'll have something to reference in case you've ever got a question about your paycheck. Okay, you've filled out all your hours. Now turn your timesheet over. On the back, at the bottom of the page, you'll see a box for your signature and the signature of your care recipient. Make sure those signatures are written inside each box. Fill in the dates and check your timesheet to make sure it's ready to mail. Don't fold, wrinkle, or tear your timesheet, especially the barcode at the bottom of the page. Don't write anything on the timesheet but your hours, and make sure it hasn't been stained or smudged. Don't mail any correspondence along with your hours. If you've got access to a scanner or copy machine, please make a copy of your timesheet for your records before you send it in. And finally, make sure to wait until the pay period is complete before mailing in your timesheets. Send them on the 16th and 1st of each month, not before. On February 1, 2016, IHSS providers became eligible for overtime, travel time, and wait time. If you work more than 40 hours in a week, overtime will be calculated for you automatically, so there's no need to do anything different on your timesheet. 
If you qualify for travel time, you'll record those hours on a travel claim form sent to you by the state once you've filled out an SOC 2255. Any paid wait time will be added to your consumer's monthly authorized hours based on their social worker's assessment. Once your timesheet is ready to send, use a pair of scissors to neatly detach the top section, the one marked Important Instructions, and mail the bottom half in the white envelope provided to you with your package. And now you're done! You'll receive your next timesheet in the mail soon, and your paycheck will be sent to you separately. This video was made possible by our Long-Term Care Workers Union, SEIU Local 2015. Our mission is to improve the lives of long-term care workers and all those who need our care. If you'd like to learn more about our union or the benefits of being a card signing member of SEIU Local 2015, please call 855-810-2015. Thank you. I'll leave you with a checklist you can use to review your timesheet and make sure it's filled out just right. Have a great day.